Number one. To help black people build wealth that can be transferred intergenerationally. That's the number one goal. To help black people build wealth and manage wealth that ultimately will be transferred intergenerationally. So let me magnify that for you. Last year on the front page of USA Today, Below the Fold, was a major article on black baby boomers and their money. Here's what the article said. The most read newspaper in America. The article said that African American baby boomers will be the first generation of Africans in America to raise another generation of Africans in America that will not do better than them. So in the 400 year history of our people in this great country, we are the only generation to raise another generation that will be worse off. Therefore, we, as baby boomers, need our asses kicked. That's number one. Number two, you can count me out of that equation. I will not contribute to that egregious So, it is not that we do not have money. We are a $1.1 trillion economy. If we were a nation, we would be the 16th richest nation in the entire world. Black people right here in America. But our money goes in one direction, away from us, and we're some of America's most conspicuous consumers. We do not buy anything that we sell. We do not purchase anything that we make. We, right? We just don't. So selling is very important. Because in America, two things are going on 24-7. Somebody's buying and somebody's selling. Right now, we're doing all the buying. Right, right, right. Right. And you cannot consume yourself into equality, and you cannot consume yourself into power. So we must fix this. So this is an initiative about selling. It's very important, very important, very powerful. What what is being said here? The philosophical foundation, the seeds that that, that Stan and others are planting, is simply saying. I don't care what it is that you do, brothers and sisters. Hopefully it's five links. But sell something. Yes. Sell something. Sell something. Four times, five times, four times. Right? Bake cookies, put them in a box, put your name on it, sell it to somebody. If you, if, you know, if you live on a farm, take the manure, put it in a bag, put your name on it, you can become an entree manure. Okay? <laughs> to get you to do. There should not be a Negro or Hispanic in America with a single stream of income. That's right. In fact, we teach you that, tell you that at the Power Networking Conference. We challenge you, if you come to the conference, you should be doubling your stream of income each year. So if you come to the conference with a single stream of income, by the time you leave the conference, you should have two. If you come to the conference with two streams of income, by the time you leave, you should have learned the skills and talents and made the connection to have four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've got 17 streams of income. Woo! Coming from, but, and, and I've cultivated and developed those, and I'm not bragging, I say that out of humility, but, but this is fundamental. Streams of income. Multiple streams of income. The second goal that we are working on, and have been working on for 28 years, is how black people become the number one employer of black people by the end of the 21st century. That we must, as every immigrant group that has come to this great country, we must create work and jobs for our people. That's what Stan and Arana are doing. We are creating work and jobs for our people. Why? Because that's the only way to raise up the poor. Jews are the number one employer of Jews. Asians are the number one employer of Asians. East Indians are the number one employer of East Indians. Arabs are the number one employer of Arabs. 
we too must become the number one employer of our own people. And how do we do that? We chase excellence and not money. Yes. Amen. We become excellent at our subject matter expertise, our specialty, uh, the thing that we want to sell. And when you become excellent at that, you will not be able to get out of the way of money. Money has a marvelous way of finding excellence. So mediocrity is not going to help you rise in this business. Averageness, no. I tell, I tell uh, black and brown people all the time, you're going to have to ramp up your game if you're going to compete in America because mediocrity, see it used to be, back in the day, let's call it during the great southern migration to the north, to create a black middle class when they came from Alabama and Mississippi and Georgia up into Detroit and to Cleveland to work in the car plants, to work in the steel plant, to create a black middle class and to have manufacturing and repetitive type tax jobs. But that created the first black middle class in our culture. That was wonderful and good, but all that's gone. And you did not have to have a lot of skills and talents and still have uh, the ability to earn a good wage. That's over with. All those jobs are fundamentally gone. In fact, you will probably need a college degree within the next five to ten years to even work in a plant. It's all going to robotics and technology. So mediocrity is not acceptable anymore. So let me say it different. If you are mediocre at whatever it is that you do, you are now competing with most people in America. That's where all the competition is, because most of Americans are mediocre. So you now compete with almost everybody, because you're just mediocre average. But if you're excellent at what you do, if you're at the top of your game and what you do, or you will never have to wait for business, you will never have to wait in anybody's line, people will wait in line for you. If you're excellent, amazing, So we have to ramp up our game because if you're black and mediocre in America, you better leave. Because you're going to be marginalized in this country and you're going to ultimately be destroyed. There is no room for black and mediocrity. My parents told me back in 1950, you're going to have to be twice as good to get half as much. They were right then and they're still right. So color does matter, race does matter. Yes, black lives matter, no question about that. But if black lives matter, they have to matter to us too. Yeah. Right? Those of you who was on the phone call Wednesday heard me say that it is my deep belief as a thinker and as a 70-year-old black man living in this country that we are searching for a key to an unlocked door. Mm. 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 Let me repeat that for you. Huh? Write that one down, right? Black people are searching for a key to an unlocked door. The door to opportunity, unlimited opportunity, is wide open. The door to excellence is wide. There's nothing stopping you from being the baddest sister, the baddest cat on the planet. Nothing. The only thing stopping you is you. So, you know my story, and because you know my story, I will tell you, I don't want to hear it. You either have results or you have reasons. Let me repeat that for you. You either have results or you have reasons. That's an eloquent way of saying excuses. I don't buy it. I'm a C student with a high school diploma in woodworking, growing up in foster care on the streets of New York in toxic Boston, straight out of an orphanage. I don't want to hear it. That's right. There's nothing holding us back from anything that we want but ourselves. Right? Now, is there racism in America? Oh, hell yeah. 
<laughs> there has been as long as we have been here, and there will always be. Will you use racism as a reason to fail? I hope you do not. You could use racism as a reason to fail because there is racism. But then racism wins. You lose. <laughs>